Hey everybody, this is Sheets and excuse me, I'm going to be going over the NHL slate for this evening. It's a pretty full slate and we're going to do the same kind of process as we always do. Um, I'm going to go over the way this slate looks from kind of a top-down uh, perspective using my, uh, my sheets. Um, try to kind of figure out what a hand-built lineup would look like. Um, and then I want to compare that to what lineups would look like when you use Saberson to help build them for you. Um, Saberson, of course, is, is, is a really, really good, I don't want to use the word optimizer in the wrong way, but it's a good program that can create kind of high upside, well-correlated lineups uh, based on, you know, based on the projections that you put into it. Um, so we're going to start with what my projections look like, try to build by hand using them, and then see how those types of lineups compare to that built by, you know, a much more uh, smart, put it that way, um, a lineup builder. So we're going to start here again on the right by looking at uh, at the players rated by uh, Sheets value score. And th again, it may seem primitive, but what you really want to do is, is look for players from that are in the top, let's call it 20 or 25, that are all from the same team. Okay, because hockey is a very correlative sport. Um, you want to have guys on the same line. You want to have guys on the same team. Um, one guy gets an assist. The other guy scores. It's really, really good for DFS, uh, you know, for DFS lineups. So the first thing I look at is I see the top overall value is is, uh, is Pavel Buchnevich from St. Louis. But the problem is I don't really see all too much in the way of stacks. Actually, that's not true. You'll, you'll go down to Levo and Thomas. And uh, although these guys are rated a little bit lower, certainly reasonable to pair with the with the, the top value on the slate. Now, again, all this presumes that they're either going to be on the same, you know, power play line or, e or even strength line. But what I found is if you have three guys that are in the top, you know, top 20, just put them all together and then fill in the rest of your stack with whoever happens to be on those lines. Okay. Even if those guys are not exactly the greatest values. So for example, we'll put in, just to give you an idea. We'll start this lineup with um, Pavel and then Levo and did I say Robert Thomas? Okay, so we'll start with those three, and then what we would probably want to do is to then go check out my lines and uh, and, and try to get as late of an update as possible, and see who's on these guys' lines and fill in your stacks that way. But you start with three guys that are good values and fill in the stacks with maybe guys who aren't the best values. I think that's probably a, that's definitely a good way to play from kind of this hand built you know, approach. Uh, when we go to Saberson, as a matter of fact, I mean, let's, let's, let's do that right now. Let's see if we can't figure out who these guys are. So we show only players from St. Louis. Pavel, but he's 1-1. Levo is 2-2. Two, two, and Thomas is 1-1. One, one. So at least Thomas pairs well um, with what we're trying to do here. So Thomas and Puchnevich and, and, and Puchnevich, maybe Levo doesn't really fit in too well. So what I probably just do is add in other guys from this line, you know, Kiru and maybe Krug on defense. And that's the way I would kind of build. Not too worry about the projections of the guys to fill in the stats, as long as you have a couple of guys with good projections to start off with. So just, just for fun, let's just put those guys in. So Kiru, and and Krug. We'll take out Levo. We'll leave him for now, but we'll Kiru and then Krug as defense. So you can get rid of Levo and you can have a good four-man stack like this. Okay. 
and that would make certainly quite a bit of sense. Um, next one is, and this one really, really stands out is Nashville. So you have one, two, three, four Nashvilles, all within the top 14, including three of them in the top seven. I mean, this is, this is really, really strong. So let's let's put these guys in right now, um, and then we'll look at the lines. You do see it's one, two, so it's three wingers and one defenseman. So we got to get rid of some of these for a little little bit. Let's go back and we'll go into Nashville. Nashville. Duchesne, Josie as defense. Forsberg and uh, Niederreiter. You can play Grandland too, but let's, let's just use those for, for the time being. And Niederreiter. So one, two, three, four, right off the bat. Okay. And again, you would go in to Sabersim and see how these guys kind of correlate or not. So let's go back. Let's get rid of St. Louis from this filter and let's go to Nashville. Forsberg, Josie. So Granlin fits in a little better. So we'll put Granlin in. And, but then again, you have Duchesne and Niederreiter on the separate line. So we can get rid of Duchesne just for the purposes of this. Get rid of Duchesne and Niederreiter and replace with Granlin. Now you have a good three man. And then what you want to do is just fill in the rest of that 1-1, one, one. that being uh, Parsonen and, hang on. Parsonen. So you have Parsonen, Granlin, Forsberg, and Josie, and that's a good four man just like that. All right, next, what's the what's another one that we can do here? Um, Tampa, not really. San Jose is interesting. It's got one, two, three guys in the top 10, pretty much. It's a good place to start. So what I'll, what I'll think about it, if all three of these guys happen to be on the same line or same power play line, then again, I'll use all three, and then I'll fill in with the other two. So let's see what these guys look like. So we want... Hurdle, Meyer, and Couture. Great game, which we like. So a Hurdle, Couture is on the second line with the first power play line, and Meyer. So what we want to do here is probably use the power play line. So we'll go Meyer. Hurdle, Couture, and then we could use these other guys, Carlson and Barbanov. So let's see what that looks like. Hurdle, Couture, Meyer. Um, Carlson, 8,300, that's a lot to pay. And we'll fill it out. Meyer, Hurdle, Carlson, Couture, Bar Barbanov. So you could build a five man like this if you want. You know. Uh, anything else? Any others that kind of stand out? I don't really see it. So it looks to be that these are the three teams that are you're going to want to highlight in your in your handbills. It's going to be either St. Louis. Nashville and San Jose, and we just thought, you know, we just went through that exercise and showed you how easy it was to build the good lines with those squads in them. And you can go five twos with those teams, four threes with those teams. And, uh, and yeah, and what's interesting is I, I, this is obviously 0.15 ownership is not going to be the case if they project all this well, but you have Jake Sanderson who's going to be a really highly owned guy i don't have him at all hurdle the san jose guys look to be somewhat popular this guy levo from st louis looks to be really really chalky so it looks as though we're not getting 
flooded with ownership of the guys I like, which is, doesn't happen all too often. So this looks like a pretty good, uh, this looks like a pretty good slate. Um, now, the next thing I want to do is just to kind of test this is I want to upload these in the Saberson and see what kind of lineup Saberson would generate for me if I used my my uh, my projection. So let's um let's put this on here. We keep on forgetting to make this this spelling change. Build 30 lineups. Oops. Oops. What are we doing? Let's save. That's fun. So let's build 30 lineups. Um, see what it looks like. Uh, yeah, a whole bunch of St. Louis, a whole bunch of Nashville. So, no, sometimes it, it, it works out that way. Sometimes it doesn't, but yeah, getting a whole bunch of St. Louis and then Nashville, not getting as much of, of, of San Jose. Um, and of the five man stacks, mostly Nashville, St. Louis, and San Jose. Four man stacks, St. Louis, some Washingtons. As far as like what players are the most highly own, I imagine it's that, that second. No, it's, uh, yeah, it is that Bucinevich. And I think part of that is because I have some, almost like no ownership for these guys. Once the ownership's kind of update, maybe I won't get as much of these, as much of this. But as far as just like what are good plays, I mean, this seems pretty, pretty easy. Now again, hockey's never that easy, but I think that if you play one of those, St. Louis, Washington, excuse me, St. Louis, Nashville, or San Jose, you're going to be off to a good start on tonight's slate. So uh I'm doing a live thing at six, which I'm going to probably do all three sports going tonight between NBA, NHL, and NFL. I don't know exactly what order I'm going to do them in. Feel free to show up at six o'clock uh, in our you know, YouTube live or in my Twitch channel or uh, the True DFS YouTube, which is this one. Twitch is, is Sheets Pones, S-H-E-E-T-S-P-W-N-S. You can get to the same streams either way. Uh, that will do it. Good luck, everybody.